there's no such thing as evil, of course, there's no such thing as good. And then that leads to just nihilism. It's a leveling tendency that everything is the same. Do I, do I, should I be greedy or not? Doesn't matter. There's no such thing as good and evil. Should I kill someone? Doesn't matter. There's no such thing as good and evil. And it's interesting because you'll find that people who talk like that seem to very much believe in good and evil. The same people who say that good and evil are subjective are, are oftentimes the same people who are marching out in the streets and telling you what you're, what you're allowed to say, what you're allowed to think, what you're allowed to do. Well, if there's no such thing as good and evil, then how could you possibly come along and say anything except for, it's just my preference that you should live this way. And of course, that's the easiest thing in the world, to tell other people how to live. The really, really hard thing is to, is to tame that devil inside of us. I'll tell you, what it says about you, if you have this devil inside of you, and you do these evil things, and you have these evil thoughts, like those, like those terrible thoughts you have sometimes, the one that you're being reminded of right now, and you wish nobody, and, and you're glad no one can read your mind, what does that say about you? It says you're human. It says you're human. But, uh, but that shouldn't be where the period ends, the story. That should be, I'm human. Therefore, I need to be aware of these things and overcome it and become something better. Don't miss this, by the way, if any of you guys are Star Wars fans. Why is it that, that Sidious is telling him to do it? And then you flash back and you see Anakin, and he's got two lightsabers. He's got the blue one, and he's got the red one. Why? Well, because that's where he, and, and, and he's got like crossed across, he has them both crossed against, against uh, Dooku's neck. Why? Because that's where he is. He's at a crossroads between good and evil. Do I, do I take him in for, for, for a trial like I'm supposed to, or do I just kill him? Do I go with the blue lightsaber, or do I go with the red lightsaber? And he's sitting there and he's got this guy telling him to do it. And then he looks over and Obi-Wan, who should be the angel on his shoulder, is unconscious. He's not there to give, to, to give him the other side. So he only hears the, the, you know, the kill him side. Why? Because he's been abandoned to evil. And then, so what does he do, obviously? Well, he cuts the guy's head off. He gives in to the evil. Now you might say like, oh my gosh, that was, that was Sidious who, who told him to, to, to do it. Yeah, Sidious told him to do it, but it wouldn't, have made, it wouldn't have been a temptation unless it was already in his head and in his heart to do that thing. The devil only can speak to you and tell you to do the things that are already in your heart. The devil came up to me and said, I don't know, eat, eat seafood. <laughs> I don't like seafood. Like, nah. Come on, eat the shrimp, eat the shrimp. I'm like, uh, uh, I'm all right, man. You're the devil, aren't you? You can only be tempted in the things that you're tempted in. And that might be the distinction between like a devil and a god. We say like, you know, does, does God tempt anybody? No. What does God do? God tests. Testing is not a temptation. Testing is designed to make you stronger. When I give you guys a test, it's not to find out what you don't know. It's not to prove that you don't know anything. It's to make you stronger. Because, at least traditionally, what do we do if we know that we have a test coming tomorrow? What do we do today? What should we do today? Hmm? Study. Study. It scares the hell out of me that we don't all know the answer to that question. Yeah, you have a test coming tomorrow. Do you just walk in with what you know today? I mean, I guess if you know everything today, but... No, you should, you should study tomorrow. If you, have, if you have a big something coming up tomorrow, you practice. And what does that practice and what does that study do? It makes you stronger. What's the point of the test then? The, te the point of the test is to make us stronger. If you understand that, then you're going to approach tests very differently. You're going to approach you know, tomorrow's chemistry test, let's say, in a very different way because you, you realize this is designed to make me stronger. If you feel like the test is designed to catch you out on things you don't know, you approach it very differently. You approach it uh, nervously, anxiously. You approach it on the other side. Thank you. You approach it on the other side with, if, you're, if, you're, if you think that the test is designed to catch you out, I'm sorry, if you, just, if you realize the test is designed to make you stronger, then you approach it with a very positive mindset. I've got this. Let me show you what I know. It's like writing an essay. You, if we approach writing an essay from like, oh my God, I have to write an essay. Because then I have to sit there and I have to move my hand for like an hour. You know? And then what if I don't know this stuff? 
yeah, you, you approach it from a very negative perspective, but instead if you approach an essay from the perspective of, oh cool, I get to share, I get to share my ideas. In other words, I've learned all this stuff, now I get to put it into practice. And if, you're, if, you're, if you don't like tests, if you're worried about tests, if you're anxious about tests, I mean, it's normal to be anxious about things, of course, but instead it's like, you do all of this work, you learn all of this stuff, hopefully, wouldn't it be neat to show off how much you know? Yeah. But instead we, we approach it from like, oh, but, oh, I have to prove what I know. You know there, there, might be, there might be a problem with our process there, is what, is what I'm saying. Tests are designed to make you stronger. Tests are designed to make you better. Temptation is designed to play on your weaknesses. Temptations are designed to make you, to, to, to lead you into the, into the bad things that you already have it in your head to do. That doesn't mean you're predisposed to doing it. Like, um, again, like, these, are, these are different. You know, be greedy or kill somebody. But if you're somebody who's, who's, who's predisposed towards being greedy, well then, yeah. If you've got like the devil on your shoulder telling you, yeah, don't you know, uh, homeless person, screw him, man, let him die. No, no, you keep that five dollars. That's yours. Like, yeah, yeah, you're right. That's that's my five dollars. That only tempts you if you're tempted in that area. If you're not tempted in something, I'm sorry. If you're tempted in something, that means that you have that proclivity in you already, and that might be the thing that we call the devil. The devil doesn't have to be real. As bullying is saying. The devil can also be in quotation marks. It's the devil inside of you. Whether you believe in the devil or not it is almost immaterial to what he's saying here. The loveliest trick of the devil is to persuade you that he does not exist. He's talking about the devil here. But if you lowercase that D and you make it just the devil inside of you to, to, to persuade you that the devil inside you doesn't exist, man, that's a recipe for just tragic living. That's when you're going to do the things that you never thought that you would do. I would never steal. You ever say that? Get ready. Because you're probably going to steal something soon. And you're going to justify it. You're going to steal a pen or something like that. You're going you're gonna to cheat and you're going to steal a grade. You're going to find money on the... On, you're you're going to see someone drop some money and you're going to pick it up. You're going to be tempted and tested... And, and, I'm sorry, not tempted. You're going to be tested in some ways it's very soon. And it doesn't seem like it, but I'm telling you, the areas that you think that you're strongest in, those are the things that you're, you're very likely to be tested in because they're not the things that you're strongest in. They're the things that we almost convince ourselves that we're strongest in. So, the devil, why would he want you to think he doesn't exist? Because then you aren't on guard. If you believe the devil is, is, is around, you're on guard. You know you're being tested all the time. Well, I'm sorry, in his case, you're being tempted. But you can, you can turn those temptations into a test to make yourself stronger. If, the devil, if you believe the devil is there, you're on guard. If you don't believe the devil is there, easy pickings, man. Easy pickings. If you don't believe that there's a devil inside of you, if you don't realize that there's a devil inside of you, easy pickings, man. There's all kinds of stuff that you would never see yourself doing that all of a sudden you'll find yourself like, wow, how did I do this? And that, that, that's not like a, a condemnation. It's not, it, it's a narration, man. Just talk to people in your life. Talk to older people in your life and ask them, do you have any mistakes that you've made? And maybe you can get some honest answers out of them. And I would suggest that maybe some of the biggest mistakes they've ever made were exactly that. It was a, when they forfeited their principles in some way, without even meaning to, without even realizing it. Maybe even until afterwards that they were doing it. And those would be some of the worst regrets because those are the regrets, and that's why I said to know them pretty well, because those are the kinds of regrets that we really want to not share with people because we realize that they speak to our, to our characters. And, you know, they speak to our past, and as we know, nobody is rich enough to buy back their past. You never can be. And those are things you can't undo and redo. And so, the devil's loveliest trick, and those he says is lovely. And he doesn't talk about it like it's past tense. He talks about it in this present tense. The loveliest trick of the devil is to persuade you that he does not exist. Of course, the other side of the coin is if you see a devil under every rock, you see a demon under, you know, in every cabinet, and then you're always constantly on guard and you're, you're, you're paranoid, but I don't know. I don't know which is the worst case, to be hyper paranoid or to think that it just doesn't exist, it's not possible. And by the way, that's also exactly the kind of idea, the belief that there's no such thing as, as a devil or a devil, 
that leads us to believe that there's no such thing as, as evil. And if there's no such thing as evil, of course, there's no such thing as good. And then that leads to, to just nihilism, this leveling tendency that everything is the same. Do I, do I, should I be greedy or not? Doesn't matter. There's no such thing as good and evil. Should I kill someone? Doesn't matter. There's no such thing as good and evil. And it's interesting because you'll find that people who talk like that seem to very much believe in good and evil. The same people who say that good and evil are subjective are, there, are oftentimes the same people who are marching out in the streets and telling you what you're, what you're allowed to say, and what you're allowed to think, what you're allowed to do. Well, if there's no such thing as good and evil, then how could you possibly come along and say anything except for, it's just my preference that you should live this way. And of course, that's the easiest thing in the world, to tell other people how to live. The really, really hard thing is to, is to tame that devil inside of us. And so, maybe, I don't know, maybe that is the case then. That the, the devil as you're older is just a, a, a mature expression of the monster that's in your closet when you're a kid. The thing that we realize is inside of us. And so we, we put it outside of ourselves because we don't like what it says about us. But I'll tell you, what it says about you, if you have this devil inside of you, and you do these evil things, and you have these evil thoughts, like those, like those terrible thoughts you have sometimes, the one that you're being reminded of right now, and you wish nobody, and, and you're glad no one can read your mind, what does that say about you? It says you're human. It says you're human. But, uh, but that shouldn't be where the period ends, the story. That should be, I'm human, therefore, I need to be aware of these things and overcome it and become something better something better than what I am, not accept what I am. Accept what I am in the sense that, yes, this is what I am, and now I can grow and become better, but not accept it in the sense of, if you can't handle me at my worst, you don't deserve me at my best. So, questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticisms, critiques, yeah.